Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice the radio. So today, I need to show you the deck that's just gone and won a giant regional over in Japan. Now, as I sit here, I don't have the attendance figures for the regional in Japan. It was over at Aichi, but general rule of these things is that these Japanese tournaments tend to get in excess of 1,500 people turning up. It is, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, bigger than any tournament we have outside of Japan. And we have a winner. And the winner played Pikachu and Zekrom. <laughs> after all of that, after everything else, the winner was Pikachu and Zekrom. That deck that was not supposed to be that good anymore. The deck that was supposed to have gone away with the release of Cosmic Eclipse. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's back. And it's just won a gigantic tournament. So we should probably take a look. And it is a Pikachu and Zekrom deck, right? If we have a look, the most played Pokemon in terms of attacking is Pikachu and Zekrom. It's got the ridiculous full blitz attack that for free lightning energy, you do 180 damage, and then you search your deck for free lightning energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon. You've then got the ridiculous GX attack that really for six lightning energy, does 200 damage to the active, and 170 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And bearing in mind that Dedenne is seeing a lot of play, and Jirachi is seeing a fair bit of play, that means you can potentially be taking two prizes with the residual damage. That's somewhat ridiculous. But this is a deck that has a lot of different attackers. So we do see a Raichu and a Lolan Raichu. If it became active this turn for free energy, it does 160 damage plus automatic paralysis. So if you don't think your opponent is playing many switching cards, if you think they're not going to be able to get out the active, this essentially lets you get a two-hit KO while guaranteeing that your opponent will not be attacking in between, which essentially gives you a one-hit KO on basically anything, which is rather nice. It's also got a GX attack that does 150 and flicks to the bench, or if you've got extra energy on there, it does 250 and flicks to the bench. That's for the five energy version. So that's quite nice. But the one real big addition... With Sword and Shield to this deck has been Tapu Koko V. Now, when I did my top 10 list for Sword and Shield the other day, a couple of people did point out that I hadn't put Tapu Koko V on the list. That was deliberate. Tapu Koko V wasn't in Sword and Shield. It was in the V decks that were released separately. It looks like it will be in our main Sword and Shield set. Expect to see it in the top 10. It is a ridiculous, phenomenal card. And there are two other cards literally only two, from Sword and, ah, three, I suppose, three other cards from Sword and Shield that made it into the deck, but this is the big addition. For free energy, you do 200 damage on a free retreat Pokemon. That does more damage than Pikachu and Zekrom for free energy. More damage than Raichu and Alolan Raichu for free energy. It's a little bit ridiculous. We then see one copy of Zapdos. This is your non-GX attacker of choice. If you became active this turn, you do 80 damage for a single lightning energy. Cool. Great for taking out smaller Pokemon and pre-evolutions. Now, we do need a bit of consistency here, and that's where the other Pokemon largely come in. We see three copies of Jirachi. Yes, I'm sorry, I know I say this in every single video, but all of the good decks are playing Jirachi at the moment. All of them. Look at the top five cards of your deck, find a trainer card, put it into your hand, and then he goes to sleep. And then you play a skateboard to make sure that you can get it out of the active even when it's asleep. We do play one Tapu Koko Prism Star here. This is really important. It lets you attach, when you put it in the Lost Zone from the bench, two Lightning Energy, one each to two bench Pokemon. And this has a phenomenal combo with Thunder Mountain Prism Star, which essentially lets you get free energy on one of your Lightning Pokemon turn one. One energy with Tapu Koko, one attachment for the turn, and then it's reduced by one for Thunder Mountain, means you can use all of these free energy attacks turn one. 
Now we also have one of the new Auron Guru here. This is the one with a really cool ability that once during your turn lets you swap a card in your hand for the top card of your deck. It lets you pop a card down to draw next turn. But it also means it's essentially drawing an extra card. It's essentially a basic that lets you draw an extra card. Now, what you're really doing is swapping a card in your hand for that card. But you put down a card you don't need now, and then it lets you draw a card. It's really good. We've got the Marshadow there, which works to get rid of your opponent's stadiums. Which is, it's kind of handy. It's he's playing a bunch of little decks. It's just really good for discarding your stadiums. Opponent stadiums, if they've got any they're really relying on. Let's say, for instance, they've got a Chaotic Swell down. And you really want to play Thunder Mountain. Well, you can't because Chaotic Swell will discard it right away. So what you do is you use Marsh Shadow to get rid of Chaotic Swell. And then you can play Thunder Mountain knowing that it's not going to be immediately discarded. We have an Absol here, which honestly, Absol is becoming... A staple one of in the majority of Japanese decks. At least a good winning deck list that I'm seeing. They've all got Absol in. It increases the retreat cost of basic Pokemon by one. And in a format full of Tag Team GXs, basic GXs and Pokemon Vs. Yeah, that's quite a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That is quite a lot. And then there's one of the Mimikyu from Cosmic Eclipse. Any Pokemon with, or GX at least, with any damage on has no ability. So it's really nice for turning off your opponent's abilities on their GX Pokemon. Cool. Now in terms of energy, we're largely playing just lightning energy here. But there is actually one copy of the unit energy which includes lightning. Don't get excited, there's no giant trick going on here. You're not actually playing playing any metal Pokemon other than Jirachi, you're not attacking with it, and the only psychic Pokemon you're playing attack for colorless energy and you're rarely going to attack with them. No, ladies and gentlemen, the reason you're playing it here is because it's searchable with Guzma and Hala. And we see this more and more nowadays. People just playing a single copy of a random special energy which will pay the attack cost just so they can guaranteed search it out using Guzma and Hala. Now, moving into the trainer cards here, in terms of supporters, we've got a couple of Professor Magnolia. That's the one that's just a reprint of Professor Sycamore. Let's you discard your hand and draw seven cards. Fastest, most aggressive draw supporter we've got in the game at the moment. So, yeah, it's the kind of thing that we're going to see more and more of. We've also got Volkner. Very nice because it lets you search out a lightning energy and an item card. There's plenty of good item cards in there. And then we've got Guzma and Hala. Let's you search for a stadium, a special energy, and a tool. But you really need to find Thunder Mountain early. And then you can search for your one special energy. And because we're not really relying on tools, but we can search one out here, we're playing a single copy of Big Charm. And Big Charm or Giant Charm is absolutely crucial in this deck. Because the best deck around at the moment is Zacian V. Zacian V hits 260 damage. Because they've generally used Arcus and Alga and Palkia to increase their damage by 30. If they haven't used the GX attack, they hit 230. But usually they'll be hitting 260. Now Pikachu and Zekrom might have resistance to metal. But they've also got 240 HP. And because this is a Sun and Moon card, not a Sword and Shield card, it is minus 20 resistance, not minus 30. Which is to say they will immediately and exactly get a one-hit KO for two prizes. So whack a big charm on. It messes with the numbers. And now Guzma and Hala can go and search that Thunder Mountain, your one unit energy and your one big charm nice and early. Now because we're playing a bunch of tag team Pokemon and you're playing Guzma and Hala, we're also playing Tag Call. Cool. And maybe you wouldn't be playing Guzma and Hala without Tag Call, but you're playing so many tag teams, you might as well. And this is how the deck goes together so beautifully here. Now, we've also got one copy of Energy Switch to move your energy. Really good in the early game. So you can essentially put both the energy from a Tapu Koko Prism Star onto the same Pokemon. It increases your chances of hitting that turn one attack because now you don't need to have Tapu Koko and Thunder Mountain. You need Tapu Koko and Thunder Mountain or Energy Switch. We've got a copy of Tag Switch here to move energy from one tag team Pokemon to another. You're playing a bunch of tag teams. That's 
quite sensible. We're playing a full four copies of Electro Power. You get to do an extra 30 damage each time you play one. That, that seems pretty gosh darn good. We got one copy of Reset Stamp. That's standard in every deck at the moment. Your opponent shuffles a hand into their deck, draws cards equal to their remaining prizes. Really good if your opponent is ahead in the game, or if you just know they've got a really good hand of cards. We mentioned a skateboard earlier, but we're also playing for Switch. You want to get Jirachi in and out the active, and you want to get Zapdos in and out the active, and you want to get Raichu and Alolan Raichu in and out the active, and when you've got that many Pokemon that you want to get in and out the active, it makes sense to play a bunch of Switch. We've got one Great Catcher and four Custom Catcher. Great Catcher lets you gust any EX or GX if you discard two cards from your hand. Custom Catcher lets you gust anything, but you've got to play two at the same time. Although if you only play one, you draw until you've got three cards in your hand. It is nice for emergency draw power. You want to be gusting. You want to be taking out the Pokemon that you need to take out. This has got good gusting. And then finally, in terms of Pokemon Search, we're literally just playing four Quick Ball. We are playing four Quick Ball and no other Pokemon Search. Because you're only playing basic Pokemon. And Quick Ball lets you really easily search for any of your basic Pokemon. It is a phenomenal card that is transforming the format. And I've told you how great Quick Ball is for non-GX decks. But the fact of the matter is it helps out GX decks a lot as well. But this also plays things like Jirachi and Tapu Koko, which are really difficult to search out generally, or they were, before Quick Ball came around. No, make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, this is a phenomenal deck, and Quick Ball helps it out massively. And let's be clear, right, this won a giant tournament. These Japanese regionals always have a huge turnout. So when we say that this was the winner, we mean it was a winner out of a huge, incredibly competitive tournament. This isn't a deck that won kind of a 20-person tournament and might have had good matchups or might have had a favorable meta. This is a phenomenal deck that can stand up to essentially anything. Congratulations to Saito Kusai, apologies for the pronunciation, for taking down the tournament. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Pikachu and Zekrom is dead. Um, long live Pikachu and Zekrom. Yeah, it turns out it didn't go away with Cosmic Eclipse. It's so good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to know what you think about this. Do you think Pikachu and Zekrom is coming back with Sword and Shield? Do you think it was a one-tournament thing? What do you think about this list? Go nuts in the comment section, but please remember the rules. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that are awesome but don't have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.